We are joined by Orlando Pirates uh, coach, Coach Mandangagazi, as well as uh, midfielder Abel Mabaso. Um, gentlemen, if I can just start with you, Coach, uh, if you can just kindly give us a, a summary of the match or the previous match we played against them and what you're expecting from them this time around. Uh, Greetings to everybody. Uh, difficult side, uh, very physical, a typical team from Africa. Uh, they play a direct game, uh, not much combinations. Uh, they just go wide, they want to cross. But what's important for us is the position that we put ourselves. Uh, we did not score away from home. We could have been uh, the perfect scenario. But having said that, it's important that there's no draw that we can play now. We have to play to win the match, uh, irrespective of the scoreline. That's what we have been working on try and score, but we must limit them from scoring because we know the outcome and how it works out. Uh, we're confident on how we have prepared uh, based on the previous match, uh, league match that we played. The, the team looks to be on the positive shape in terms of uh, creating more chances to score. Uh, we're positive that we'll get a good outcome. Uh, greetings to everybody. Um, yes, uh, just to add on what the coach was saying, um, yes, it was a physical game. Um, the world, the physical, um, and of course, we wanted to get the goal, um, even though it was a goalless draw. Um, so it's very important for us to get the positive results come Sunday so we can go into the next round of the tournament. Thank you so much, Tandy, and good morning to Coach and Abel. Um, Coach, a question just for you. Um, we know how the situation can really changed um, when it comes to the second clash with just a single goal from the visitors. How much are you drilling to the defenders into this match in terms of focus and making sure that really, really, really nothing goes through? Because it can change in an instant if a loss of focus in any, any part of the game. We, we fully are aware of the situation and maybe our main focus is scoring. Uh, because again, if they don't score and we don't score, uh, we still come to the same situation. Uh, while we are aware uh, that we should score, but our rest defense, our defensive balance should be on point. Uh, that's what we have been working on. And like I said, uh, based on how we have prepared on how we played in the previous match, it looks positive. Uh, we know the threat from the opponents uh, dribbling on the sides for only one reason. They want to cross. Uh, they've got very physical strikers in the box. But I think we have the capacity to, to do that and then move into the next round. Um, I just wanted to find out if there's an update on Goodman Mosela. You know, when he went to Bafana, he was called up. He didn't arrive and we all heard what Coach uh, Hugo Boss said. You know, and there has been no communication about him since. So I just wanted to find out if you can give us an update, whether he's back with Pirates or what's the situation. Thank you. Sometimes it's said when you, you read some of the articles on the media that are not true. Uh, there are a lot of speculation. Uh, and, 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 and for me, it becomes very irresponsible when some of the statements that come out of the media, whether through the national team coach or anybody. Uh, the situation of Marcelo, if you, you, you are in a position that I'm in, is very sad without revealing too much. Uh, but I understand the situation, and uh, if the coach chooses to choose him or not, it's in his right to do that. But uh, in a position that the boy was in, I'm fully supportive of what happened to him, and right now he's back in training, and we support his cause as a club and as coaches in front of him. But what the coach says about players and how he says it, sometimes I wish it could be controlled and be done in a better manner. But I'm not in his shoes. Uh, but if I were to do the same thing where he's standing, I'll do things differently. Unfortunately, in football, you've got so many things to work on. Uh, firstly, when we were given an opportunity, we worked on intensity, we worked on fitness, football fitness, and we worked on trying to retain and maintain the ball as long as we can. And then the next phase is working on the attacking that we have been doing that. And like I said, the previous match, uh, I thought we were unfortunate. We created so many chances. Uh, our attacking that was, uh, was perfect, except for putting the ball in the, in the net. Uh, so we have been working a lot on that, working on set plays. So we're working on everything, uh, one step at a time. And I'm confident if we do the things the way we have been preparing, 
uh, a lot of good results are going to follow. Uh, There's a question for Abel. Abel, uh, just how, how what lessons have you guys taken from last season's performance in the CAF Confederation Cup? And, and what can you take into the tournament this season? Um, that you just have to make sure that you win your home games and make sure that you uh, seal the seal the results in, in your home matches. And I think that's that's the most important lesson um, that we have learned as a team um, from the previous campaign. So it's important for us to make sure that we get the good results that we need um, in our home games. I'm always cautious about opponents, especially in that area, and, and, and the little knowledge that we have about them. We can only use the information that we have after having played them. Based on how they played, they did not look like a team that has not played for a long time. So we'll use that as a measure and prepare from there. Although the surface was artificial, they look very fit. They look very physical, very prepared. So we'll just prepare for a team that is normal and prepares normal and try and score goals. And I think it's important that Paris must have more goals than the opponents so that we can just move into the next round. I can't read much uh, on their status on how much they've played and how, much, how less they've played. You know, one may look and say, Paris, Paris squad is a very, very talented team and then it should be easily challenged Mamelo Sanders. But why do you think you guys is not working just to find that unit team that team that can compete and, and challenge for trophies. And also to, to Mabasa, um, sitting alongside Manda Zingas, what comes to mind? Because I remember both of you made a, a, you know, a good career. I mean, um, achieved it. something I think I would admire in 2014, 2015 season. Just to, to work with him now at the Palace, what does it make of it? Does it make you everything easy for you? Because I can see that you also you know, get your game time at the club. It's very unfortunate that as a coach, I have to make excuses. I know coaches are not allowed to, to make excuses, but Pirates have been very unfortunate in my presence. I know it happens in all clubs, injuries, but for the amount of injuries that our club has gone through, and not injuries based on the bad training, but injuries that are conduct injuries, uh, you can list a, a 15 players that are out in the club currently. Uh, that does not give us the better chance. It's not an excuse, like I said, but uh, if we had all the players at the right place and the, the change in leadership, any process of change, any process of injuries like it's happening, needs time. But I know in football, you just have to win every game, especially in this club of ours. And we understand the frustration of our supporters. Uh, this trend must always be where you are saying on top. But with all what I've mentioned above, uh, I understand the process. I understand why it's happening. It's predestination. We are where we are right now, but we can only be better from this. And from what I see, uh, we are going to be better very soon. Yeah, and uh, just on to question, yes, uh, we worked uh, previously uh, together. It's a nice project. We had a fruitful time there also, and I just want to relate that and to make sure that the team is in a better position and things and compete for things and compete to, to win trophies and that's just what I'm um, just here for to help the team move forward and to put in as good performances we can be proud. Um, your striker Cheopato uh, Mabasa, you know, he came back from injury, uh, he scored two goals, he looked in great form, um, he went to Bafana and was taken off, you know, very early in the first half and then he came back and now he hasn't scored. Um, you know, did you have to put some work you know, in, in talking to him and in, in getting his confidence back up after, you know, um, that um, early substitution with, with Bafana Bafana, or how are you getting him back to, you know, to, to scoring? Thank you. Uh, to be blunt, uh, I wish there could be better communication uh, from national coaches and coaches in the PSL. But honestly, uh, it's not at, at the best. Uh, I don't know the reasons. If maybe there was a contact about uh, Mabasa, uh, who is a good player, on how he plays, what are his strengths, what are his weaknesses, uh, maybe they will understand better uh, how the club uses him. But for the lack of that, uh, it puts us where we are. Uh, Bule in the national team got injured. Uh, maybe better communication, some things could have been avoided. I'm not here to, to lambast um, maybe the other party, but I'm speaking the truth. 
uh, some of the things you wish they could be done better. Uh, Mabasa uh, was very good in certain areas, like all players as good witnesses. But maybe a better communicated scenario uh, would have made him perform better. The coach gave his reasons on his game plan and what he wanted from him. Uh, but maybe where I'm sitting, I would have done things differently. So one, we have spoken to him. Uh, we're still using him. He's still our best player. He's still our best striker. And we're still going to continue using him. And then I hope maybe with the better understanding when he goes back into the setup, uh, he will be more useful into the national setup. Can you articulate for, for laymen, for, for fans, the difference between playing on a grass surface like the ones we are used to here and these artificial turfs that you get, especially in the DRC and uh, a bit further north, the actual difference, just so that a lay person can understand and why is it a disadvantage when it comes from playing from on our services going to the artificial surface? And then second is if you can just give us an injury update going into the match, any injury worries that you might have. Thanks, Scott. Firstly, uh, playing in Africa, the, the opponents have the same trick. Uh, one, they'll just destabilize you in all forms. And the terrain is, going to, is not going to make it easier uh, for you. One, in a hot surface, uh, that type of artificial turf is very hot. Uh, the artificial turfs are not the same. The one in DRC is the one when uh, there's heat. The heat then comes from the surface into the boots, plastic boots, whatever boots the players are using, uh, which is why we recommend it to our players not to put water in their boots because they will have blisters. Uh, one, it was very hot. The, 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 pumps, the pump of the ball is unpredictable. So what we use to have uh, how the ball bounces in a normal turf uh, is different from an artificial turf. Uh, the flow of the ball, how quickly it moves, uh, is also affected. Uh, so how you take set plays, the ball that they were using. So there's no, so many adjustments that you have to get used to. But having said that, when you play in Africa, you must be adapted. Pirates have been there before. They have played there before. They have won before. So one cannot use that as an excuse. One will understand everything else that, that surface presents. Um, currently, Mabaso, you'll help me. Uh, with so many injuries that are taking place in our club, you even lost count uh, of how many players are out in the sick bed. Uh, but currently, uh, there's not many players that are out except the ones that you know. Lodge is still out. Um, Ule is still out. Uh, Ofori is still out. Um, who else, Mabaso? Um, I like the club, if you can go to the website, they'll give you the updates, and I think they, they, that will, they will be much more informed there. And I think the club will, will sort you out in the club website, to be honest. Um, Coach, you, you mentioned that uh, you understand the frustration of the fans, and um, with the announcement that the fans can come back to the stadium now, would you have welcomed fans back for this match? How important would it have been, considering how crucial this encounter is? Did you probably need that 12th man? in the stands. And, and also for Abel, a similar question. I mean, you've played in front of fans before. Some of the new guys in the team have been experienced playing in front of the Pirate supporters. How important do you think it's, it is for those new guys to also experience the proper feeling and just get that injection from the fans, especially with the results um, being the way they are at this stage? From your question, I can hear an answer already at the end. Uh, but having said that, I'll try and respond. It can work both ways. Uh, if results are good, uh, you'll want fans to be there because they become the 12th player. For the players that are new and young, uh, it can work against them, uh, but you will never know. It's something that you can't judge. It's only my discretion that is saying that. Uh, but for Pirates, uh, being the club that it is, uh, at some point, with all safety precautions having been uh, taken, uh, it will be good to have the fans. Uh, football is a, an entertainment sport. And it's football because of the fans. So at a point when it's safe, uh, foot fans will come back into the stadiums. But for now, uh, irrespective of what happens, uh, we'll still take what is here and respect all the government protocols for the current situation that is taking place in our country. The mandate from the club is very clear. 
and and you can only do better than what you have done before and maybe go all the way uh, but one step at a time uh, we have to improve our performances in the field of play uh, but on that side we, we will want to achieve as coaches achieve as players uh, just besides what the club is looking for we will do our best uh, under these conditions that i've mentioned but the the team looks like it's on the rise uh, we we the players that we have tried there's an an improvement in our game which is more important to to me uh, for me let's improve our football uh, when we improve the football it will improve a lot of deficiencies that are within our setup and so once we do that train the team not players have all players ready to perform at any stage when they, they are selected and i think we are on that uh, stage currently and it looks positive Coach, just to go back on the issue of uh, Goodman Mosele, and then you spoke about this, the, the, the lack of communication between you guys and the, the, the association. Has a coach of the national team since he arrived in the country, phone you and, and speak to you, you know, just to, to get a, you know, the, the intellectual, you know, in terms of you guys. And then the, with the score being 0-0, zero, zero, is it an advantage to you or is it an advantage? What, what, how are you looking into, into it in this game? Or... <laughs> no, no. So they... like coach. They, 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 I, I had to clearly. Uh, the issue of communication between coaches and the, and the national team, I don't want to repeat what has been said by other coaches. For the fact of the problems that other clubs are mentioning that are happening in our club uh, with the national team, it just shows that something is not, uh, is not done correctly. I'll use an example of the previous coach uh, from where I was. Uh, I've met him, met him personally. He came to training to see our team training, uh, discussed uh, with the technical team. He addressed the team on his expectation, the previous coach uh, who was there. I would have expected that the same will continue, but to be honest, it has not happened for whatever reason. So it becomes very difficult that um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mutual uh, uh, connection. Uh, I've tried to communicate uh, with some members, but it should not be done that way. It should not be done in isolation, where one coach from one club uh, must try and connect with the coach. The structure must inform uh, what are the expectations of the national coach from coaches. And I think it's an area that needs to be ironed out, and it will lessen the problems uh, that we have currently in terms of injuries of players. An example, if we're having a loading session today, and the player is selected in the national team tomorrow, and they have a loading session, already on that is a risk of injuries. A better understanding and communication between the two parties will help the national team, will also help the team, so that when our players come back from the national team, uh, they're still uh, useful into the team. And I think that's highly important, but it's not happening currently. You know, we know that um, since uh, Joseph Simba left that Coach Padlu and you are working sort of as co-caretaker coaches and there has been no update from the club. But when we saw the, the team sheet last time uh, from the CAF match, you know, it listed you as head coach. Was that maybe um, because anything has changed in the structure or was that, you know, because it, 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 your role, um, it is required from CAF, you know, to have certain qualifications or to list someone as head coach? Thank you. Can I recommend a book to you, my brother? There's a book, um, Five Levels of Leadership. Uh, get that book. Uh, the stages there are position. First one is position. The next one is permission. The third one is the team accepting you and production. So production, I'm in that stage. Whether I'm a cleaner, whether, whether I'm a kit man, what matters to me is the badge of Paris and Paris doing well. And I put all my energies on focus on that. All the others, the titles, I, I, I am just not interested. Uh, so if you want to title me as, a, as, a, as an assistant, as a co-coach, as a caretaker coach, as a head coach, it matters less to me. What matters the most is Paris doing well in my presence, whether in any position. And, and, and that question for me is just a question that I don't think becomes relevant at this current position. Um, just a message to Coach Benny. He's also got a match lined up, a crucial match that could uh, define uh, whether they, the team moves to the next stage. Have you had a chat with him already? Um, and just a message to him. 
I'm very sectional when you come to that. You know, KZN people always have this uh, Zulu mentality. It will be nice to see South African teams doing well in CAF Championship. It has got a lot of benefits. Uh, so Amazulu are not different. It will be nice to see them doing well. Coach Penny, um, I haven't shared with him personally, uh, but I would wish uh, Amazulu to do well. And it will be nice from that province for a number of reasons for them to do well. But Pirates must be the first and others can follow. That is a modern defender, um, a defender that any coach will love to work with. Um, comfortable on the ground in the build attack. He can use both feet, he's strong in the air. He can defend one versus one. It affords the team an opportunity to play with the high line. If you want to press on top, if you want to press opponents, you should not be worried about the space behind. He presents you uh, with that dynamic. I even think that at some point you can even play him in the middle of the park. That is what he presents in our team. He's strong on set plays, defensively and offensively. He's just a complete defender. Maybe very soon he should be even going higher than where he is right now. But I'm really happy for the contribution that he has provided in our setup. 